All right, hello everyone. Um, I'm really glad to be here. I, I was last at EdCon in uh, 2017. Yeah, who was here in 2017? Yeah, nice. It seems like a lifetime ago now, but anyway, glad to be back. Um, so, all right, let's, uh, without further ado, let's get started. I, I probably have too many slides, but we'll see. So I'm gonna talk about, um, you know, realizing the world computer vision uh, by combining uh, Ethereum with the internet computer. And uh, to give you some perspective, um, you know, Bitcoin appeared, you know, um, in 2009 and gave us digital gold. Um, Ethereum launched in 2015 and gave us smart contracts. Um, and then finally, the internet computer launched in 2021 and produced something that you can think of uh, rather like a crypto cloud. It's a blockchain, but it uses a very different architecture, a lot of uh, super interesting uh, advanced math and cryptography. And you see these kind of um, innovations come about every six years or something. So um, what, is, what does this world computer do? Like if you can combine um, different chains and you can add um, crypto cloud functionality, um, one of the things it can do is trustless multi-chain. So uh, the internet computer can interact with other blockchains uh, without, without bridges. Um, you can build absolutely anything on it. So you could build um, you know, a mass market social network that will run end-to-end uh, -end in a decentralized way. Um, you can assign Web3 services to DAOs, and not just in the sense that you know, people vote on proposals and if some bit of text gets enough votes, someone goes away with a backdoor key and, 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 and implements the proposal, but with full automation. And you can integrate with Web2. So it, it, it's a big potential game changer. And the internet computer is the glue that makes this possible. Um, it has something called uh, concurrent canister smart contracts, um, which, uh, if you're curious, remain deterministic. Um, and it gives you um, un unbounded scaling and crypto cloud um, efficiency and, and, and speed. And it's powered by this thing called chain key crypto. So the objective um, of the Internet Computer Project and, and the Definity Foundation generally is, is to solve this sort of fundamental problem where um, Web3 still primarily runs on centralized technology. And that that's where um, hackers head, regulators head, sensors head, gatekeepers head, vested interests head. And generally, the continued use of centralized technologies is the root of most, most of the problems that occur. So, oops, I think we've got a clicker problem. Let's try. Oh, there we go. All right. Um, so we want to end what we might refer to as a kind of decentralization theater where 99.9% um, of compute in the Web3 space remains on centralized tech. So, um, you know, here's a typical architecture where Web3 is running on Amazon Web Services. And the problem is that the platform owner here, um, Jeff Bezos, is ultimately a controller. Um, of the platform. And the developer is um, also a kind of controller of the Web3 that runs there because it's their credit card that's been put into the service and they get a username and password and they can just go in and arbitrarily um, change data and content and um, inject malicious code if they want to. And that, of course, means that you can't run that Web3 under the control of a DAO because a DAO um, can't control what's running on Amazon Web Services. So the way this uh, is solved is through the world computer. And this vision of the world computer is one which is all encompassing, where actually in the end, everything, every system and service that you can imagine, every single system and service you can imagine um, runs 100% 100, 100 on, on the blockchain. And um, you know this opens, uh, I mean, has, has the advantages in, of removing those weak centralized points, but also enables new things like full, auto full automation with DAOs, where DAOs have complete control, there's no back doors, um, software updates, Web3 software updates go through the DAO, the whole thing. 
So um, since the internet computer um, has launched, you know, we've seen an emergence of quite interesting ecosystem and new things have become possible. So to get a sense of it, um, I don't know if you can see on the screen, um, yeah, you can, the, the address bar of this um, browser window, it looks like a traditional crypto exchange, like a CFI exchange. But if you look in the web browser address bar, you'll see there's a sort of strange string of numbers. That's because what you're actually looking at is the address of a canister smart contract. And that canister small contract is serving the user experience into the browser. So one of the tricks um, the internet computer allows you to um, perform is having a small contract serve the uh, dynamic user experience. And you can do this in a way where you have the blockchain pre-sign assets like HTML and JavaScript. Um, and there's a service worker in the browser that's verifying something called a chain, chain key signature. But this is an order book exchange. This is like a CFI exchange. Um, you've got market orders, limit orders, um, bill or kill, and all, all of this is happening on, on, on the chain itself. Um, this is something called open chat. This is um, a uh, on-chain, fully on-chain, 100% on-chain uh, messaging, Web3 messaging service. And um, every, every chat message is a transaction. And all of the contents stored on the internet computer itself. So um, even if a message is video or an image, um, it's living on, on, on chain. And of course, the user experience is being served into a browser, is also being served by smart contracts. And um, two, two, there are two especially interesting aspects of this service. One is that it runs under the control of something called a service nervous system DAO, which also upgrades the software. So it's more than just something where we vote on a text proposal. It's actually an, a decentralized operational framework where um, you can update a running Web3 service, um, a bit like you know, um, Git is, and, and Git, you know, GitHub provides a framework managing an open source project, if you want. Um, the other um, interesting piece of this is that it, it, it's, it's multi-chain. And you can do things like send crypto with chat messages. And in fact, your um, messaging account is a wallet. And um, that, that's leaning on the multi-chain capabilities. OK. All right, so um, Chainkey Crypto release timeline. Um, so the internet computers are integrated at the network level with Bitcoin. Internet computer nodes speak to Bitcoin nodes. And um, smart contracts on the internet computer are able to create Bitcoin transactions without having private keys. The chain key crypto signs the Bitcoin transactions. And of course, this is hidden behind easy to use APIs. You can just um, say, give me a Bitcoin address, receive Bitcoin, send it. Um, the next phase uh, is integrating with Ethereum, again, at the network level. Um, you're going to have bidirectional calling between canister small contracts on the internet computer and uh, EVM small contracts on Ethereum. And this bidirectional calling will be possible without a bridge. So you'll only be ex exposed to the, the security um, concerns of two different blockchains rather than additionally being exposed to the concerns of a bridge. And that's a very, very big deal. It also re removes all the latency and things like that. So uh, I work at uh, Divinity Foundation, uh, based in Switzerland. Uh, there's no company involved in the Internet Computer Project. Um, established in uh, 2016, uh, research that began in 2015, um, we're a not-for-profit. Um, we actually have, I think, the world's largest team of famous and well-cited cryptographers. Um, probably the biggest R&D team in crypto, and it's been running um, for years. About 270 plus people globally. Um, so I've given you the sort of pitch about what it does. I'm, I'm going to try and run you through in the time we've got remaining um, how it works. And, and if we've got time, we'll do a quick Q&A. Um, so internet computer isn't proof of stake. It's, it uses something called uh, proof of useful work. And um, that means that it uses um, crypto protocol to combine these things called node machine devices 
that are run by independent people and, and uh, run from data centers all over the world. And here we go. Uh, these nodes are combined to create subnet blockchains, and that's how the internet computer scales its capacity. And these subnet blockchains are, are obviously host um, and, and re replicate canister small contracts, which I think I mentioned can run concurrently on a subnet, but it's done det deterministically. Um, and together, you know, all these subnets um, are combined using uh, chain key crypto to produce a single scalable and efficient virtual computer that hosts canister smart contracts. Oh, that was interesting. Okay. Yeah. So another aspect of the internet computer is um, it's what's known as an adaptive blockchain. It's the, it's the world's first adaptive blockchain. And that means that it's self-governing. So it has a DAO called the network nervous system that's integrated into its protocols. And again, this is a kind of operational framework. So <clears throat> there are no kind of centralized parties with backdoor keys or organizing um, you know, miners to upgrade. Um, this network nervous system um, is completely open and permissionless and people submit proposals to it to structure the network, create new subnet blockchains, um, upgrade the protocol, and, and, and things like that. And through that, it just continually evolves. In the two years it's now been running in production, um, the internet computer blockchain has been upgraded more than 145 times, more than 145 protocol upgrades that have taken place. Um, and that's thanks to the sort of reduced friction of having a DAO integrated with the protocol that's actually up, able to upgrade the whole thing. Um, for example, pushing out software upgrades to the actual node machines, um, devices that, that host the network. So capabilities, um, uh, the network nervous system, <clears throat> if you like a kind of master DAO that controls the network, is also a DAO factory. It creates these things called service nervous system sub DAOs. And this is a really rather recent development people are beginning uh, to use now. And you can basically propose that you want something that's running fully on chain um, to run as almost like a blockchain extension under the control of a sub DAO um, that maintains its own microeconomy, of course, um, and it'll run things, uh, something called a decentralization swap, where the governance tokens are swapped for other tokens with the community and the DAO maintains um, control of the tokens received in its treasury. Um, and that actually um, provides for all kinds of new Web3 paradigms where you can kind of founderize users by giving them governance tokens. Um, users can directly interact with Canister smart contracts from any browser. So you don't need a, um, thanks to the way it works, you don't need like a local client to interact securely. Um, you can actually directly interact with smart contracts as you saw with the, the, the DEX. And um, you, you don't authenticate yourself with a wallet, you can build a wallet, but you actually authenticate using something called internet identity, which is integrated with WebAuthn. The key is stored on your device, like in your laptop or your phone, inside the TPM most modern devices have. Um, and that'll actually create a session for you. So the, 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 you know, as you interact with the Web3 service, that's obviously generating transaction calls, right, remote, remote procedure calls. That's hidden because you've created a session. Um, and this is where it gets kind of interesting. The, the, the results of these RPC transaction calls um, are signed uh, by the blockchain using a single master public uh, chain key. Um, and, and that chain key will tell you not only that the um, transaction ran against the smart contract with those sub the parameters provided and it produced that result, but that it hasn't been tampered with, and also that, that the blockchain is running correctly. Um, and, and this magic is, is possible, e even though the, the node machine devices have different public keys. Um, and as you can imagine, as this thing scales out, you gains more and more um, subnet blockchains. Um, which are kind of invisible. These aren't like avalanche subnets. They're actually combined into a single blockchain. Um, and, and this sort of, um, you know, thing that can scale in an unbounded way um, has a single 48-byte um, um, master chain key. And, um, of course, the nodes don't have some private key or something like that. And when you actually interact, you're not getting back a single signature. It's a compound signature, but it's a chain key. 
Um, something uh, else, I'm curious, you know, the internet, internet computer counter system or contracts can, can interact with Web2 by something called HTTPS alcohols. Um, and bearing in mind that um, this is being integrated at the network level with Ethereum, this means that Ethereum smart contracts will have the same functionality. Um, and what happens is these canister smart contracts are run locally by the node machines, normalize the results, the normalized results are passed um, to consensus, and if consensus is reached, um, it's passed to the smart contract. Um, and, and that supports Web2 interactions and decentralized oracles and things like that. Arguably, you don't even need an oracle um, with this functionality. So um, this is where it gets uh, really cool. So the chain key crypto framework that powers the internet computer has been extended so that canister smart contracts can um, create ECDSA keys. And again, the ECDSA chain keys, so there's no private key. It's a sort of variation on threshold cryptography. Um, and this means you can uh, use a canister smart contract to, to sign pretty, pretty much anything. Um, the um, other thing, of course, this makes possible is that the internet computer um, can enable canister smart contracts to interact with other chains without a bridge being involved because the internet computer allows canister smart contracts behind the scenes to create transactions um, on, on other chains. So, um, we use the integration with Bitcoin to create something called Chain Key Bitcoin. Um, and uh, this is hopefully going to see some use in Logano soon. Um, it gives you an idea what you can do. Uh, the, the internet computer, by the way, its nodes talk to the Bitcoin nodes and they pull um, blocks, maintain the UTXO set to make it easy for developers. And Chain Key um, Bitcoin is just created with a trustless contract. Um, it allows you to transfer Bitcoin with one second finality. Um, an incredibly low cost, like thousands of a cent. Uh, okay, there we go. Whoops. There's a bit of latency here. All right, we're back. Let's see if we can do this. Um, so um, the important thing, of course, uh, for everyone here is that Ethereum integration is coming. And you're going to be able to um, pull directly into the internet computer Ethereum smart contracts. And that will provide um, dApps on, the, on Ethereum with access to things like, uh, you know, decentralized, trustless web serving, and bounded scaling, um, incredible efficiency. So our aim has always been to find ways of making blockchain more efficient than traditional IT. And if anyone's curious about that, um, Catch me later and I'll explain how it's technically possible. Um, another thing that's coming on the internet computer is, is AI. So AI is very much at the heart. Web3 AI is very much at the heart of um, where we're going now. And it's going to be possible to spin up uh, AI models and call into AI models um, from, from Ethereum itself. So um, that's it. I kind of run out of time. Um, we've got an ICP event tonight. So if you want to know more, um, Please come along. If you take that QR code, you can get the Eventbrite or whatever it is form. And, and we'd love to see you there and, and talk more about Ethereum internet computer integrations and the things that are possible. Thanks.